So you are browsing the yarn aisles at Joann's. You come across this yarn. It's so soft and you're you have to have it. I mean, you don't know exactly what you're gonna make with it yet, but you grab all the colors that are inspiring you, you go home, you go to Pinterest, and you start looking up, what in the world can I make with velvet yarn? And you come across a pattern, it's for a scrunchie, and you think, oh, this is gonna be so fun, so quick, and so easy, and you start crocheting away on your scrunchie. As you're working on your scrunchie, though, you find yourself frogging over and over again because you cannot see your stitches, and once you're finally finished with a scrunchie that should have took maybe 10 minutes, uh, ended up taking you two hours, you are covered in fluff. Like where did this fluff even come from? It's all over your sweater, it's all over your couch, you look at your dog, they even got a little fluff on the top of their head, and you sit there and you think that was that was a lot, that that was stressful, only to use your scrunchie the next day, pop it out of your hair, to see all of these loops coming out of it. Like your scrunchie you just worked on for two hours yesterday is now completely falling apart on you, and you're just thinking, okay, what? The ends have popped out, there's also stitches that are popping out, and I am going to take my velvet yarn, shove it, in the corner of my craft room and never look at it ever again. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I'm being a little bit dramatic, but that was kind of my first experience working with velvet yarn. Now I will say after years of using velvet yarn and selling products with velvet yarn, I feel like I've pretty much mastered it. I know that it can be a little bit of a nuisance, it's, it's, it's a little bit, I don't, I don't know how to word it nicely, but velvet yarn can be annoying, but it can also be a super, super awesome yarn that you can not only make products for yourself and your friends and family, but if you're running a crochet business, you want to use velvet yarn, especially if you're selling at craft shows because your customers are going to feel this yarn immediately want the item that you're selling. They won't even look at the price tag. I have so many people at my craft shows buying my adult beanies that I sell that are made with the velvet for $45 dollars without even checking the price tag first. They're just like, I need to have this. <laughs> so if you've tried velvet in the past and didn't really love it, or maybe you use it, but you still have some issues with it, or maybe you just have heard the horror stories of velvet and have been avoiding it altogether. Well, you're in the right place because in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you my full guide on how to properly crochet with velvet so you can start creating best-selling products that your customers are going to rave about. Seriously, when velvet is used properly, it's not only such a joy to work with, but also your customers, they're, it's gonna be their new favorite thing ever, especially if you're selling in person at craft shows. So if you're a little stressed out right now and you might have some doubts about velvet, just know at the end of this video, you are gonna be a velvet yarn pro and you'll be able to dive into your next project and just have that confidence that you need to crochet items with velvet for your shop. Hey, hey, hey makers, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Cameron. If you're new here, welcome. I'm so happy that we get to hang out today and chat about all things velvet yarn. I post weekly videos on my YouTube channel all about helping you grow your crochet business. So go ahead and subscribe down below. Alice was barking in the background. Um, but if you, oh, but if you are not subscribed to the channel already, go ahead and subscribe down below. She's saying subscribe. Now let's just get started with the video. Let's start with a quick introduction to the yarn that I really prefer to use when it comes to velvet yarn. There's a lot of different brands that you can choose from. Some are gonna be better quality than others. They're gonna vary in their price ranges, but my personal favorite is definitely the Bernat Velvet Yarn. This is a yarn from Yarnspirations, and you can find it at your local Joann's. A few of my favorite things about this specific velvet is it's not so thin that it takes forever to work up, but it's not super thick so that you still have a lot of control in your stitches. Also, the shedding really isn't too bad with this yarn, but don't worry, we will be talking about shedding a little bit later, but the shedding doesn't seem to be super bad with this yarn. Also, I absolutely love the color selection that they have. It's not so crazy overwhelming, but the colors they do have are very, very pretty, and they do sell really well for me at my markets. Quick tip, watch out for the difference between the Bernat Velvet yarn and the Bernat at 
baby velvet yarn. The Bernat blanket yarns, the baby is actually the same weight as the normal blanket yarn, but when it comes to the Bernat velvet yarn, the baby is actually going to be a bit thinner. Now you can definitely still use the velvet Bernat baby yarn, but if you're working with a pattern that calls for Bernat velvet, your gauge is gonna be completely off and you may run into some issues with that project when it comes to sizing, hook size, and be able to keep your tension tight enough to work with the velvet. So just keep that in mind. There are definitely patterns for both the velvet baby and also just the regular velvet Bernat yarn, but I just wanted to point out that differentiation between the two. So if you go run to Joann's after this video, make sure you're keeping an eye out if it is the baby or not. The baby is going to be a little bit of a lighter weight and it's gonna be a bit of a thinner yarn. When I'm working with the Bernat velvet yarn, I usually use a 6.5 millimeter hook. That is the hook that I use in my beanie pattern and my headband pattern that I have coming up and also all of the free patterns that I have working with velvet on my channel. I have a keychain pattern and I also have a little pumpkin pattern and definitely more patterns with velvet coming soon. Now a little bit more about velvet before we dive into some of these issues that we commonly face when it comes to working with velvet. We're going to chat a little bit about the unique qualities of velvet. This yarn is softer beyond comparison. You have probably gone to the yarn store before and if you're anything like me you have to feel every single skein of yarn and as you're walking by I swear this velvet is the softest stuff you're ever gonna feel ever and that definitely translates to your customers when they're shopping at your market and they're feeling all the different things that you have to offer and they feel the velvet Ugh. I just love seeing people's faces when they feel how soft the velvet is it's definitely more of a luxe look and feel for a pretty affordable price I will pop on the screen right now how much Joann's charges for a skein of Bernat velvet and I know I say affordable and yarn is typically kind of expensive, especially right now, but I will say you can definitely use coupons off of this yarn and shop around the sales and you can actually get it down pretty low and you don't need a ton of velvet to work on a product. I know I can make two of my velvet adult hats with just one skein of this and so I am able to keep that price point down if I can shop with coupons and, and you you know the drill. If you're shopping at Joann's, you're not using coupons yet, this is your sign to do so. Another thing I absolutely love about this yarn is that it keeps you warm without the bulkiness. I love the wooly sticking quick yarn. It's fun, it's bulky, it's chunky, and it works up super quick, but it's bulky and it's chunky. And if you're not going for that look or you're wanting to just use something like, for me, my husband and I ski and snowboard. And so I love to use my headbands, my velvet headbands underneath my helmet and they're not super bulky. They still keep me warm, but they're not taking up all this room where I can't even put on my helmet, right? They're really sleek and they're really modern looking. And again, it just has that really luxe look and feel to them. Also on the label, it says not to machine wash and dry your velvet, but honestly, I have before. I don't recommend doing it if you add a pom-pom to your hat because a pom-pom, those things do not survive the wash. It's not pretty. But if you have anything like the velvet headbands, if you do your stitches properly and you use the tips that I have in today's video, then you can definitely throw it through the wash. I definitely recommend a gentle cycle and I personally with all of my handmade stuff recommend hand washing and leaving out to dry because that's just going to improve the longevity of your product and making sure that you can wear it for years and years in the future but of course if you need to throw it through the washing machine it's not going to be completely ruined okay and I feel like a lot of people think oh the washing machine is going to ruin my velvet it does but only if you don't use the tips that I'm going to be sharing with you in today's video so let's dive in to some of these common mistakes or just struggles of using velvet and how to fix them easily. First things first, shedding. We gotta talk about it. Shedding is when you've got your yarn, right? I just have a little skein here. And by the way, does anyone else do this? Sometimes if I don't have my scissors, I just <laughs> snap my yarn. And you can tell that now there's just all this fluff coming out from it. And that fluff doesn't look like a lot, but when you're working on a product, it gets everywhere. It's in my hair right now. <laughs> so with shedding, there is something that you can do to prevent this. The good thing about the Bernat Velvet is it doesn't shed unless you have an open end like this. Like I just snapped this end, but the first thing is to use scissors cut that and then you actually take a lighter and be careful. I want you to be careful here, but you take a lighter or a match and just you burn the edge and it stops the shedding from happening. It just kind of creates like a, 
it just stops the stops the shedding from happening. So that is what I love to do. And that's the hack that I use when I'm working with velvet and I don't want there to be fluff literally everywhere. But again, the Bernat velvet, actually you don't deal with fluff when you actually finish the product. It's the ends. It's whenever you have an exposed end like this, that is what your fluff is coming from. So if you can just hit it with a little lighter, that will solve that problem. I told you these, these problems are easy to solve and I, I've got you, I've got you in this video. Next, let's talk about worming. If you don't know what worming is, Oh, worming is the term that we use to talk about when you finish a velvet product or really any product after you're done crocheting that piece, your stitches almost start to pop out and certain strands of yarn will pop out of your stitches. And what happens is these loops form and they almost look like worms. Like they're coming out of your product. And actually I didn't even know what this was until I, <laughs> this is sad. I worked on this huge blanket. I made this blanket when I first started my business because I thought it would be super fun to have this big velvet blanket at my shows. I feel like it would draw in customers and definitely sell. I worked on this blanket. It was huge. It was beautiful. I was doing a single crochet back and forth and back and forth. And at first I started with kind of looser tension, but my tension got tighter over the blanket. You couldn't really tell. It wasn't really a size issue but after I was finished with the blanket I looked at the bottom of the blanket and these loops were just forming and they were pulling out of the blanket and it looked like my blanket was falling apart and I was so upset because I spent hours on this blanket and I was gonna charge a lot of money for it too because it took me a long time it was a lot of materials it was a lot of work and I ended up not being able to sell that blanket because once worming starts, there's not really much you can do to fix it, which is a huge bummer. And that's why I want to talk about preventing worming because after your product has wormed, it's really hard to recover it at that point. It's honestly something that you just have to frog and restart. Luckily, I just kept the blanket. I don't really care that much. It's at the bottom and I kind of tried to kind of tuck the worming parts in and whatever, but it, you can still tell. But it had to be a personal product at that point and I couldn't sell that in my shop anymore just because it wasn't high enough quality at that point since it had wormed. A couple things that you could do to minimize worming, well actually just prevent it altogether, is one, using tight tension. So as you're crocheting, you want to use as tight of tension as possible. Now, of course, there's also going too tight in your tension and your gauge could be off. So always do a gauge swatch on the pattern if you are worried about sizing and all of that. But I will say, the tighter you can go with your tension, the more your stitches will hold and it will prevent worming in the future. And if you're selling your products, you do not want to create a product and it looks fine and it goes home with your customer and they wear it a couple times and it starts to worm. Like that was one of my biggest fears when I started incorporating more velvet products in my shop because of this blanket. <laughs> what I recommend doing is testing out your tension and your stitch that you're using. As my next tip for you, the stitch really does matter. Now I used single crochet on this blanket, but my tension wasn't tight enough. So it started to worm. But typically if you're using tight tension with a single crochet, it works totally fine. Now I will say half double crochet and and double crochet and treble and all, all the other stitches. I have really struggled with getting to work with velvet and it does kind of limit that yarn to only certain stitches. But hey, if you want to use this yarn and you want to sell these products, I want to make sure that you know all that you need to know about this yarn so that you don't make this huge elaborate project, maybe this huge cardigan and a half double crochet and it completely falls apart on you or your customer. So I'm just giving you the information that I've learned over the years. I'm sure you can make it work. And again, tight tension is going to help the most as far as um, whatever stitch you're using. So if you want to try other stitches besides the single crochet and the half double crochet slip stitch, which is the stitch that I love to use on all of my velvet patterns because it holds so well. I personally think it holds better than the single crochet as well. And it's easier to keep that tighter tension with that stitch. But anyways, those two stitches are the ones I recommend. If you want to try other ones, just make sure you're keeping your tension extremely tight. If you struggle with keeping tight tension, try sizing down a hook size or two and seeing if you can stick to the gauge that way. And it's just going to help you keep tighter tension on your product and that way you prevent the worming altogether. Next tip is about counting and seeing your stitches with velvet. Now this can be super duper tricky. You may not like what I'm about to say to you. Okay, no, I do have a tip. If you are learning velvet and you're working with velvet and you really want to try to see your stitches better, use a light colored yarn. This is going to help you so much with differentiating between your stitches. So if you're using like this, this yarn is light, but I would honestly go for a white 
or even a lighter pink like this would be really great when you're just getting started and learning velvet. This is going to help you see your stitches way better. The worst thing you could possibly do <laughs> is go buy a skein of black velvet. I struggle with black velvet and I like to say I'm, I'm pretty good at, at using velvet yarn. Yeah, the black, it is so hard to see where you're supposed to go. It's very difficult. So I would stick with the lighter colors as you're learning and as your skills develop and you grow your confidence with working with velvet, you can definitely start playing around with some of those darker tones and eventually get to black and you can start using black as well. Now here's where, here's where I lose some people, okay? You got to feel for your next stitch and you might be like, wait, what? What are you, what are you even talking about? I have to look. I know you don't look when, I don't look when I crochet with velvet and people are so surprised by this, but it's because I am feeling for the next stitch. And what I like to do is use my pointer finger and my thumb on my left hand, which is my tension hand and I am right-handed. So I use my hook in my right hand and I feel for the next stitch. A lot of people, they doubt that they're able to do this. Like I can't even crochet without looking. How am I going to be able to feel for the next stitch? But you can do it as you're looking at it, feeling and looking, and you'll be able to tell where you're supposed to go. You want to feel for like a little bit of a divot. And that is where the space is for you to go through with your hook. It is hard. I'm not even going to lie to you. It is hard to see your stitches. But another thing that I want to point out, and I'm a perfectionist. So if you're a perfectionist, this might bother you a little bit, but I have to tell myself this when I'm working with really any fluffy yarn or any chunky yarn as well. If you are a little bit off, you maybe you missed a stitch or maybe you didn't go into the right stitch a couple rows back. It is really hard to tell. It actually disguises your mistakes really well. So I wouldn't stress about it too much. If you don't even notice it or you notice it later, your customers aren't going to notice that you skipped a stitch or you may have accidentally added an extra stitch. As long as the product looks good overall, what I like to do is ask somebody in my life who doesn't crochet and be like, Hey, can you try to find a mistake on here? Nine times out of 10, they cannot even tell that there's a mistake anywhere, even if there's multiple mistakes on that product. So that's a little test you can do. Most people aren't going to notice. And hey, it's handmade. It's made with love. You are not a machine. You are not a robot. Okay, you're human. And it's okay to have a couple mistakes in there. Now we're moving on to weaving in our ends with velvet. This is a struggle, man. I just, I don't even do it anymore. And you might be like, wait, what? You don't weave in your ends, girl. Like you just let your ends just hang around. No. <laughs> With my products, I will tie knots on the backside of my product. And yeah, it's not as pretty, whatever. But guess what? Nobody has ever complained. Oh my gosh, there's a knot on the back of your beanie. Like nobody has ever noticed, I don't think. And if they do, it does not stop them from buying. Because again, my velvet products are my best selling products at craft shows. Obviously, it doesn't make a huge difference. And I feel a lot more confident knowing that my ends aren't going to come undone on them. And they're going to see ends pop out. And so what I do, instead of weaving in my ends between the stitches, like you know, normally would do with crochet is on the back side. I will tie the two knots together. So if they are separate, like if my end is kind of on the other side of the product, I will weave to match the ends. So they're together. And then I tie them in knots together and they won't come undone that way. And what you can do is tie your knots and then you can grab your lighter and make sure that you keep them from getting fluffy everywhere. And then you can even add a touch of fabric glue or any type of glue that will hold that knot together even more. Now, personally, I have never used glue, but I know a lot of other makers do use fabric glue and they say that works really great. So maybe that's something I can try in the future, but there's a little hack for you if you find that your knots aren't even holding. But if you tie three really tight knots, not so tight that it snaps on you because that's, let's be real, that's another issue with velvet is it can snap, okay? But um, if you can tie three super duper tight knots, then you will be able to just keep that on the backside of your product. And that way, if you're selling your products with velvet, you can be confident that the ends aren't going to unravel on them. They're going to be like, wait, what the heck? I just paid $45 for this mini and it's falling apart on me, <laughs> right? Let's talk about tension. Now, tension we touched on earlier is super important with preventing worming. But as far as tension goes, there are some hacks that I have for you to keep your tension consistent and also keeping it super tight so it does prevent that worming. And then altogether just makes a more higher quality product that you can sell in your shop as well. The number one thing with tension is practice makes perfect. If you can remember back to when you first learned how to crochet or maybe you're still 
in the beginning process of learning how to crochet, which is totally fine, you will know that some of your products that you make, like it starts like this and then it got skinny. Sometimes there's like a couple stitches that are super big and then there's three that are super tight and you try to work back through them and you can't get your hook back through them. Tension is something that improves with your skill level of crochet over time. So don't stress about it too much. If your tension's a little off with the velvet and it's a little bit looser at some sections and it's a little bit tighter at others, remember we're trying to keep it as tight as possible and consistent tension also really does help prevent worming and also just creates a better quality piece as well. But if you're struggling with it, I highly recommend working with tension with not velvet yarn before working with velvet yarn because working with velvet yarn can be kind of tricky. It is a little bit slippery, so it's almost kind of harder to hold and keep that tension tighter. But I promise you, it can be done. I do it and I really, really love working with velvet yarn and I find it's really fun to keep that tight tension with velvet yarn. But yeah, when in doubt, you can just go down a hook size and that's definitely going to help you keep tighter tension as well. Also, I have found that tension rings can really help when working with velvet. If you want to keep tighter tension, you can snag some tension rings, which is really, it's just a ring that you wear and you wrap the yarn around it and you can crochet with that. And that way you're not having to use your fingers or your hand in a certain way to keep tight tension. The ring is doing it for you. And I found that that works super well with working with velvet. So I can link in the description box the rings that I found. I think they were like $5 and you got like eight of them. It was something crazy like that. It's on Amazon. And that way you can have some tension rings or try those out and you can keep tighter tension when working with velvet. That's a little hack I have for you. I could not be more excited for you to master velvet yarn. I hope you're feeling confident right now. And if you want to put the skills that you just learned in today's video into use, then I highly recommend checking out this video right here where I walk you through how to crochet a keychain. And it is actually with the stitch that I highly recommend using with velvet yarn. And it's also a quick, super easy pattern. It takes about 10 to 15 minutes to make these so you can make them for your markets. And it's just a really great way to practice your skills with velvet before diving into a bigger project like the blanket. Please do not make that mistake. Make that huge blanket only for it to fall apart on you. First learning the basics in today's video and then implementing them in a project like in this video right here. I cannot wait for you to use velvet in your handmade business. I will see you, my friend, in this video right here. Bye!